Solve for x. Sound familiar? To do this, you need to first understand the application of algebraic properties. This means how to combine like terms, the order of operations, and the properties of equalities. There are three general steps to solve for x. First, simplify each side of the equation following the order of operations, PEMDAS. Next, isolate x using inverse operations. This means you will undo the operations. And finally, once you get x, check using substitution. Let's start with simplification. While there are many approaches that can be used to do so, your first step should always be to simplify each step of the equation as much as possible. In most cases, this involves using the distributive properties and or combining like terms. The distributive property is a form of multiplication. According to the order of operations, this property should be applied before combining like terms, which is a type of addition and subtraction. To combine like terms, find all terms that share identical variables on the same side of the equal sign, and then add or subtract their coefficients using the given signs. Keep the variable as is. In the second step of example one, there are no terms like 3x, as none of the other terms on the left side of the equal sign have an x. However, the values negative 12 and positive 10 are like terms because they are both constants. That means neither has a variable as part of the term. When negative 12 and 10 are combined, they become negative two. In example two, after the distributive property has been applied, there are three terms with the variable n on the left side of the equal sign and two n terms on the right. It is important to only combine like terms that are on the same side of the equal sign. On the left, 4n, negative 2n, and negative 6n are combined to give us negative 4n. On the right, combining n and 4n leaves us with 5n. Once each side of an equation has been simplified as much as possible, then the process of solving can begin using inverse operations. Example one is solved as a two-step equation. A line drawn down the center of the equal sign reminds us that whatever operation is applied to one side of the equal sign must be applied to the other. In the original equation, x is first multiplied by three, then two is subtracted. In order to get us x by itself, apply inverse operations in the reverse order from which they were applied. This means that since the last operation to happen to x was to subtract two, we must reverse it first by adding two to both sides of the equal sign. Next, undo the operation of multiplying x by three. The inverse of multiplication is division, so we divide the quantities on both sides of the equal sign by three. In other words, when isolating a variable, Inverse operations should always be applied in the reverse order of operations, starting with undoing addition and subtraction and ending with undoing parentheses. Example two has variables on both sides of the equal sign. All of the ends must be moved to the same side of the equal sign using inverse operations before you can isolate the variable. it doesn't matter which side of the equal sign the variable ends on. Some people prefer to always have the variable on the left of the equal sign and move the variable term from the right to the left. Others prefer to keep the coefficient in front of the variable positive and move the smaller of the variable terms to the side of the larger. Either approach leads to the right answer, so choose the one that you like best. once you've isolated the variable and found a solution. Always check the solution by substituting the answer back into the original statement and see if the result is true. So remember, the three steps to solve for x. Simplify each side of the equation following the order of operations. Isolate x using inverse operations. And finally, Check using substitution.